Hello, and welcome to this week's installment of Tea Talks with Teeple. This week we are focusing on the propagation techniques of one of our finest beverage herbs. It's caffeine-free, low in tannins, high in fluoride to whiten your tea, and is often mislabeled as a tea. That's right, we're talking about rooibos here. Rooibos, or Ascolathus linearis, is native to South Africa, where it, where it used to be harvested as a wild plant by the Bushmen and Hottentots of the area. After the Dutch colonized South Africa, rooibos, which literally means red bush, began to be cultivated for commercial use as a caffeine-free alternative to the Camellia sinensis plant. Because it is in the Fabaceae family, and not the Tiaceae family, it cannot officially be called tea. It is therefore often referred to as a tisane, which means tea-like substance. On top of the benefits of being caffeine-free, Aspilithus linearis is known for being higher in electrolytes than most teas, and is therefore used to relieve headaches and to solve dehydration. It can be used to treat milk allergies, eczema, hay fever, and asthma in infants, and is often used in the treatment of vomiting and diarrhea. What a great plant! So why are more people not growing this shrub? After first learning all of the benefits presented by this disdain, I went on an intensive search on how to grow my own seedlings. Much to my dismay, all of my research came up blank. Seeds can be bought, well, nowhere. It appears that the local Rooibos Tea Management Board controls most seed exchange of this plant. In fact, the only seed I could find records of being sold were on eBay in 2008. I was distraught. Since this time, I've spent many hours with the great Dennis Eveli searching in seed exchange catalogs for a contact that might be able to send us seed. I've spent hours with the lovely Ruth Stoner searching our library bookshelves on the secrets of how to start this marvelous little creature. In the end, it was endless hours spent Googling that divulged to me the secrets of this plant, secrets I will now share with you. Rhoibus is in the Fabaceae family, and therefore bears many characteristic traits of its relatives such as peas, beans, this lovely Kentucky coffee tree, and even shamrocks and clover. The yellow flowers are an especially good giveaway. The plant produces fruits that only contain one or two hard seeds, which could explain why seed is so limited. It grows as a shrub that gets about two meters tall, and the young branches are a reddish color. The linear needle-like leaves are the part that we drink. Process, they look like this. And steep, it looks like this. Mm. Aspalathus linearis is native and endemic to the small mountainous area Sederberg in the western Cape province of South Africa. It prefers USDA zones 8 to 11 in sandy hills and on the sides of mountains. It requires acidic, well-draining soils in full sun. Many sources indicate that the soil in South Africa hosts a particular kind of mycorrhizae that help nitrogen fixation in rooibos plants, and that this could be one of the reasons we struggle to grow it in North America. Scientists believe that climate change threatens the survival of rooibos and that increasing temperatures and decreasing rainfall may cause the extinction of this plant within the next century. I mean, it's February and I'm not even wearing a jacket! The most difficult part of rooibos propagation lies in the seed collection itself. Seed is very, very tiny, and housed in a pod which bursts open when it matures, dispersing the seed to the wind. Often, collectors break apart ants to harvest the seeds that ants have gathered. Commercially, seeds are now harvested using sifters. Seed is so hard to collect that when it was first being propagated commercially, it was the most expensive vegetable seed in the world, going for 80 pounds per pound. That is approximately $160 per pound. Once you've acquired your seed, wait for early spring, which is about January to March, and begin propagation. 
Many sources suggest pouring boiling water over the seed. and letting them soak for a day. Other sources simply suggest a pre-soak of about 12 hours with warm water only. Originally, seeds were placed between two millstones and the seed pod wall was ground away. Regardless of technique, these seeds need to be scarified. After scarification, lay your seeds in a quality potting mix and then cover with about 10 millimeters of soil. Many sources suggest using a mix with sand and perlite for good drainage. Once they are large enough, plant your seedlings in their own pots with well-drained acidic sandy soil somewhere between July and August, and then let your plants overwinter in the greenhouse, just like this one. If you live in South Africa, feel free to, plant, to transplant outdoors in the spring, but if you live somewhere colder, like here, you leave your plants in a large pot and then just bring them indoors for winter. Semi-hardwood cuttings should be taken in early spring and planted in sand or well-drained compost in a humid warm spot such as a greenhouse. Some sources indicate that semi-hardwood cuttings will also survive if taken in early summer and left in a closed frame to grow. Unfortunately, there's no real indication of how successful either of these techniques is, so best to experiment. I'm leaving it up to you. As you can see, rooibos is not an easy plant to propagate. Even after finally obtaining this elusive seed, unless you have the right soil and the right bacteria, success is limited. I suggest that if you are as dedicated to this plant as I am, you simply move to South Africa. Thank you for watching another episode of Tea Talks with Teeple. Stay tuned next week when we discuss various methods of Camellia sinensis propagation. Tot ziens!